Hi, today we have another PlayStation 3, but this time it's a fat one. It's the original Japanese backwards compatible uh, CA CHA00 model, um, which I'm not sure you can see here, but here it is. Um, I bought it a while ago, fully boxed, as you can see, with all the paperwork, etc. Um, the box is in pretty good shape, I'd say. Uh, but the problem is that it's overheating pretty badly. I mean, it powers on, works for about 30-40 seconds and then shuts down. And it won't turn back on until it's cooled down. I'm not sure what the problem is, but I suspect this console will need a delete. That is um, removal of um, IHS from CPU and GPU, thermal paste replacement, and hopefully that will help. If it doesn't, then uh, we'll need to troubleshoot, perhaps reading syscon errors to see what is really going on. Anyway, let me take it out of the box as it barely fixed, it fits my desk. So here it is in its full glory. Uh, it's in pretty good condition, I'd say. There are a few, sc few scratches here and there, but it's not, it's not bad at all. Um, the back is pretty good as well. Um, it has not been opened as far as I can tell. So the seal is still here. Um, yeah, I mean, heavy, as all these fats, um, really good condition, by the way, this is my console, uh, it's not customer's console, uh, I collect stuff, so, <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, I'll take it apart, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, so the board is out, but before we start, uh, I'll show you what I, what I used to delete the PS3 or any other stuff. Uh, so I use this. This is just a cheap Chinese, the uh, whatever the holder, blade holder, whatever it is. I don't know. Um, and uh, this is just, let me show you, regular Wilkinson blade that uh, people used to shave. And uh, what I do, I'll show you what I, what, how I, how I get to this shape. Let me show you that, you see this? So, what I do, I just take a regular blade, just uh, cut it in half first, then cut it in half again, right here, like that, and then, just be careful, they are very sharp, and then I cut this bit here, so that, let me show you, cut it roughly like that. I'll show you that. So I got it right here. To get a shape like this, more or less. And then I just uh, put it in this put it in this uh, holder. As you can see same shape. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um it's just this works for me. Um, so let me just take this out so that I don't cut myself. You also need a kind of good sturdy um, tweezers. I use this. Doesn't need to be this, but just make sure it doesn't bend or anything. It's just uh, it's sturdy. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, so I'll also have I'll also put this board on uh, these kind of two boxes. Just random boxes that I got with some padding underneath so that I don't damage anything uh, just because of this power connector. And I think technically I could remove this, but I'll, I'll keep it. So I just put it like that so that it uh, doesn't bother me. And uh, these are also, these USB ports are also in the way, but that's, that's fine. We'll try to work around those. So what do you do? You take this this blade and put it in from from this side where these um, caps are. Obviously, we are talking about cell here. So there is a um, you won't see that, but if if you look at your uh, board, there is a slot there that you can actually slide it in, in. So slide it in and then just use the. I'll show you that demonstrate that right now, but uh, so like that. Don't go too deep, like maybe, maybe to that, so that this, I use this 
slot to push this one here. Um, can you see that? This one here, not this big one here. This one. Well, you can use this as well, I guess. But just don't put it too deep. Um, and then just gently push. Uh, what I'll do first, I'll uh, heat it up, um, maybe 200 degrees Celsius, heat it up a little bit so that it softens, well, hopefully soften that um, that glue, whatever whatever that is. And we'll just go around this and see how it goes. So I'll heat it up first and I'll have to take the board to my workshop or to my desk because uh, I don't have it uh, in the station here. So I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, so this is kind of warm. As I said, I, I use 200 degrees, 250 degrees, um, not much heat, just to warm it up. Slide it in. And what I also do, I'll kind of uh, twist the, the tool to that direction so that the blade points slightly up. Like that. And again, don't rush. Need to be careful. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. This is not the greatest tool. I had one that this um this sticks a little bit more, this thing here, but unfortunately I don't have, I don't know where it is now, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, do it now. Uh, I'll pull this out and start again, I think. Maybe, maybe I'll try to slide it in. I think we should be okay. So let's proceed. Just like that. I think I went a little bit too deep there, but that's not a problem. We can fix that. If I can pull it out. Like that. Need to start again, unfortunately. And again, uh, I need to change this tool. And again, um, don't rush. Don't panic. Um, it can go wrong, obviously. But um, the the one thing that's very important here: don't scratch the board with with the tweezers. So just be very careful uh, with with that. Let's try and uh, do it again.
and I think I'm too. And we're done. So, um, hopefully I didn't uh, scratch any traces. There are microscopic traces on this. I'll show you that under the microscope in a minute. But uh, that's it, that's, that's how we do it. Um, and yes, this is just uh, dry. I think that was the, the problem. So, I'll show you how I remove this because this this part needs to be removed this glue and this as well so let me let me show you that so I have another tool Chinese tool again same kind of thing with this straight blade and just do it like that Sorry about my phone. And it's done. I also take this out while I'm at it. Obviously I'll go ahead and uh, clean everything with uh, IPA. So yeah, that's that's it. That's done. Um, let me show you um, this um, cell processor under the microscope. So you'll see the, those traces and uh, I'll just make sure that I didn't scratch anything. I'm worried about this part here. Um, yeah. So yeah, make sure this, this holder is... Um, can hold it really well because as you can see this one even if I if I this is the max I can do it, it's still moving so this is not perfect I need to buy the, the other one just get one that that has this um, these little things whatever 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 these things here that hold the blade that they stick um, more a little bit more than, than this because this one is not great so, yeah, okay, let me, um, let's go under the microscope and see the processor. Okay, so this is the cell under the microscope, and as you can see, we already have a scratch. This is where we started. Fortunately, there's no traces in this area, so this is not a problem. So let's go and see if we did any damage further on. This looks suspicious. No, I think it's just the remains of this uh, silicone. So as you can see, these tiny, tiny things are the traces. And I'm not talking about the green ones, it's these, the ones in between. And these um, tweezers are very thin, like um, hair thin, kind of. So you can, you can see the... Actually, let me... Let me first go uh, go uh, over it, and then I'll show you how thin these traces are. So there's this is all good. Don't see any damage anywhere here. Yeah, I think we're all good. Uh, I mean, the ultimate test is obviously um, we powered it on, but okay, let me. Let me zoom in even more. I think that's all I can do. So, as you can see, again, these are my tweezers. Hair thin tweezers. Like, these are the um, thinner tweezers I have. See all these traces here? So there, yeah, this is definitely the 
this silicone glue or whatever. So yeah, I was worried this is a scratch, but this kind of scratch would ruin this console completely. Um, I mean, this, some of these traces can be fixed, but, you know, a scratch like that, that would be game over. But anyway, so this, this looks okay to me. Again, the ultimate test will um, come later when we try and power it on. Um, time for to delete the um, RSX. And I just realized that I didn't record um, the whole thing. So I'll show you how I do it. Just let's just pretend this is back on. So what I use, I use um, a screwdriver essentially. I heat the whole thing up, the the RSX. I mean, uh, again, 250 degrees. Um, don't go too crazy. Um, a little bit of paper or plastic. This is the kind of very thin cardboard. It's just to protect this area because there are there are traces here. We don't want to um, damage those. And also be careful. They are very small, either resistors or caps. I don't, I don't know at this moment. And um, something that will serve as a, a lever for the screwdriver. So this is unfortunately a magnet, which doesn't make doesn't uh, make the, 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 the job easier. But and then, um, but that, that's all I have. Something that will kind of be a lever. Um, I'll put the this back just to protect the. Um, cell, and then gently slide the your screwdriver right here. There is an opening between the, the the chips here, and just push it. Again, heat it up, and just push it down so that this will pop up just like that. And hopefully, I didn't damage that. So that that's how I do it. It um, works most of the time. Just again, heat it up, and uh, should work. Again, just be very careful. There are traces right here, and um, very small components. And uh, yeah, make sure you don't push on on the on the chip itself. So don't go up because then you will. I'll put this just to make sure I don't damage it. If you do this, you will push on the chip and break the chip. Or, or this this plate. So you need a lever, something like this, so that you can actually push on this part. So you just push up and will just pop off. Again, don't use magnet. This is bad idea. So um, what's left? I'll clean everything off and I'll show you how I put this um, put all this back. Okay, so I put this um, all together, um, these shields. Um, I replaced these pads here. There's eight or ten, I can't remember, and I replaced, I think there's six pads um, here in this area. Uh, I normally don't replace pads unless they are like dry or very dirty. These were dry, so these were kind of breaking when I was trying to remove them. Um, if the pad is um, kind of looks like it's kind of wet, um, it's probably okay. You know, the original the original Sony pads are good quality, so there's no point in replacing them if they are if they are good. So if they are fairly clean um, and they look kind of wet wetish and and they are kind of soft to touch, don't replace them. So I'll keep this one. See, this is kind of. I'm not sure if you can see this, but it's it's definitely kind of wet and it's uh, soft. I also kept there's two big pads, one here I think, and one here, and I kept them as well. They were clean. They were um, they looked pretty good. So again, this is put back together, but we'll need to start with this. Uh, obviously, everything is cleaned, so the IHS um, all cleaned. And this was, sorry, this was kind of hard to remove, but it's all clean, the the this, the um, processors are cleaned as well. So we need to put this back. Um, what I do before I start cleaning the, the thermal paste, the old thermal paste from this, I just kind of mark the spots where the, you probably can see this. So this is one corner, this is the other corner, and the same thing here. 
um, one mark here and one mark here so that I know where to put those exactly. I mean this is not uh, rocket science you don't need to be exact one millimeter here or there will work probably the RSX is m m important because uh, it has this um, these chips here on the edges so we don't want to kind of expose them but there's really not much room here so even if you don't do that um, you should be okay but again this kind of works for me I know where to put those so um, I use MX4 and there's MX6 I think they're, they're new um, compound but this works fine works for me so what we'll do, we'll, we'll put this back here and uh, obviously we'll, we'll, we'll put this back here then we'll add thermal compound to, to, the, to the chips and we'll just put it back together so let me do it right now and um, before I start, it's probably a good idea to keep them in the kind of direction they were originally so um, if you flip them like that, so keep this in, keep the the cooling thingy in this position. So, and then if you have your RSX and cell facing you, you should see the RSX and cell like this. And then just flip them, and they should go in this direction. So just keep that in mind. So um, what I do, I just put the thermal compound on on these need quite a bit of this uh, and I spread this around Okay, doesn't need to be perfect, so I'll just place them this in exact position. And again, it doesn't really need to be exact, but I can do that. So now I'll just press on it to make sure it kind of sticks to to this part. Okay, that should be good. Same thing with the cell. So I just need to keep this in this. I need to remember because when I put the thermal paste on it, I won't see the cell thing. So again, same thing. Spread this. Okay, that should be okay. And now I forgot, I think that way was that way, yeah. So, and put it in place, push on it, just maybe wiggle a little bit. Okay, so this is done. Now we'll focus on this. Again, make sure this is all clean which it is, I'll just remove the dust from there. Should be good. And on these ones, I just put a little bit of, just a blob of paste. Don't forget about this. It's probably way too much on these chips, but but it's okay. So uh, the last step is just put this back here. Just make sure once you put it put it down here, don't move it, don't move this thing too much. I'll just again press on it. Uh, 
and now we'll clip this. and we'll just put the clamps back. Now, important thing, the clamps are bent. I actually try and bend them a little bit more. So they're bent, as you can see. So they go that way. Believe it or not, I've seen people putting the clamps in this direction, like that, which makes absolutely no sense because they won't be pushing on anything. So make sure they go in the right direction here. So, like that. And just put the screws back. Don't tighten the screws uh, too much. Just put them so that they kind of go in place and then we'll tighten them kind of all together, one by one. So this one's fine. Okay, so that's that's all. Um, obviously, I will need to put everything back together. Um, this is all in place nicely. Uh, so I'll put the whole put the whole thing back together. Um, uh, again, don't forget about this this part here. And this is for I think the drive. Uh, I've obviously checked the battery. Surprisingly, it's uh, it's fine. Again, the good thing about these fats is that you can replace the battery without removing the, all the, those, those shields and all that. So, but this is this is fine. I've tested it. It has like 3.1 or some 3.01 or something. So three volts. So it should be fine. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I'll put it back together, and we'll see if that worked. I mean, we'll see if it overheats uh, or not. Okay, so. I've put it back together. It's connected to the power, to the HDMI, I have my controller. So again, uh, before I did all the, the, the delete and all that stuff, when I powered it up, it worked for maybe 30 seconds or so, and it just powered down, blinking red light, and uh, never came back again un until it's kind of cooled down. Um, the air that was blowing from the vents was wasn't really hot it was like warm and the fan was spinning pretty hard so i'm pretty sure that was the problem the thermal paste and um, dry thermal paste under the 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 um this metal um, ihs things so again i've put it back together let's power it on and see what happens it should power up yeah so you see green light, I'll put the, the screen. So that, that's exactly what was happening before. So far so good, I, the, the fan is um, pretty quiet, I would say. Yeah, I think it works. It would have been dead by now. Like, it would have... Um, yeah, and the air is getting warmer and warmer. Which is very... which is positive. I think it works. Let's see if... Uh, if we see any networks first. Yeah, it does seem to work. Okay, so... Um, yeah, it definitely works. I mean, it would have been dead by now. Uh, let me just um, put a trusty Call of Duty. See what happens. Oh yeah, the arm is uh, kind of very warm 
by now. And the fan, by the way, is still quiet, which is good. Still working. Yeah, I, it works. So I'm pretty sure it, it works. That is that was that was the problem. I mean the the dried thermal paste under the IHS. Um, so yeah, that's uh, I'll I'll play Call of Duty, uh, and I think I need to clean this the, the drive. Um, but yeah, I think that's all for today. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, my advice, if you plan to do the delete or remove the IHS, I think that's what it's called. This this kind of metal thing is. Um, then I suggest starting with some um, dead PS3 fat. So buy uh, a PS3 fat. They are very cheap, especially if they are broken, completely broken. Um, buy one. Try and do the delete on that one. Make sure you don't scratch anything. Make sure you, your technique works. And then do one of these. These are expensive and these are fairly rare, I would say. So yeah, don't experiment on working uh, CHCH00 or backwards compatible things. I'm very happy with this. This turned out, yeah, it's kind of hot. The fan is still pretty quiet, so it works. I think I'll install custom firmware on this one and just monitor the temperatures and all that, but so far it looks really, really good. So that's all for today. Let me switch this back. So that's all for today. Uh, again, thank you very much. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you like my videos. There will be more coming in the next few weeks. Thank you.